stocks sell off on Wall Street. The Dow Jones index sees its worst day in over a year as indices correct for the fourth consecutive session. Asian markets to open with deep cuts as uncertainty builds over the Fed's rate cut trajectory. The gift nifty is also suggesting a lower start for the Indian market. Crude prices surge, Brent rallies over $90 a barrel as tensions build between Iran and Israel after Israel strikes an Iranian embassy in Syria. The RBI's Monetary Policy Committee will announce its policy decision later today. A CNBC TV18 poll sees no change in rates from the RBI along with unchanged withdrawal for accommodation on stance. RBI defers the implementation of new rules for exchange-traded forex derivatives by nearly a month to the 3rd of May. But the central bank asserts that there is no change in its policy. Traders fear liquidity could dry up by as much as 90%. Veteran investor Ramdeo Agrawal calls on the government to step up the divestment drive after the elections, says there is still excess demand versus supply in the market. Manish Chokhani says valuations are not cheap and expects 5 to 10% return on the index this year. Good morning in the Mumbai News Centre. I'm Sonal Bhutra. You're watching Power Breakfast. Those are the top headlines and we have to catch up on a lot of them. It's a Friday morning, but first up, let's take a look at what the Asian markets are doing. Well, it was a weak handover that we got from Wall Street. A lot of these Asian markets are shut today as well. Uh, the Chinese market, the Taiwanese index as well. Uh, so we do not have a rates from some of them. But if we look at something like a Hang Seng, which is opening after a day's break, that one is up two tenths of a percent. We have uh, the likes of um, Nikkei, which is the biggest, uh, which is seeing the biggest cut today, down two and a half percent. After there were doubts whether there could be any rate cuts considering the inflation, considering the crude oil prices going above that $90 a barrel mark. Even the cost is lower, so is the Straits Times. And Gift Nifty, that will come up for you on the screen because that one is indicating that the start for our own markets could be in the red. 64 points lower, that's what the Nifty implied open is suggesting for the Indian markets today. Let's talk about the US markets now. Wall Street ended lower on Thursday. Dow Jones lost over 500 points, marking its worst session since March 2023. The S&P lost over 1.2 percent, while the tech-heavy Nasdaq dipped 1.4 percent. The U.S. Treasury yields also rose off from the lows after Minneapolis Fed President floats the possibility of no rate cuts this year if the progress on inflation continues to stall. CNBC Steve Leesman gets us the key highlights from the Fed President's recent comments and an overall outlook on the rate cut timeline and key expectations from the jobs report due. Uh, full of Fed speak, being asked for Pre Fed President Neil Kashkari making one of the more hawkish comments just this afternoon saying that if inflation continues to move sideways, he wonders if the Fed should cut it all. Now, 17 of 19 Fed officials are forecasting at least one cut this year, but two are not. Kashkari had said in early March that he saw a maximum of two cuts this year, so no cuts doesn't look to be his base case. At least it wasn't a month ago. Unclear if his view has changed. Still, there's been a torrent of Fed officials saying the Fed should cut but can take its sweet time about it. Barkin saying this afternoon, smart for us to take our time. Mester saying she anticipates cuts later this year. Harker saying inflation is still too high. Powell said at some point this year, the Federal Reserve will be cutting. Only Gould's be making sort of out and out dovish comments saying employment could deteriorate if we stay restrictive for too long. Now, all of this is inexorably linked to the jobs report tomorrow where the Fed is hoping for some slowing, but it's increasingly pointing to higher immigration as boosting the labor force. So think about it this way. Number around 100,000 starts to raise questions about whether the job market is weakening faster than we thought and that concern about ghouls because one we're thinking about 200,000 that's the consensus that's the sweet spot ostensibly the market's ready for that and then start thinking about a number north of 275 causing some concern the job market remains too hot and too tight and that wage inflation remains a threat remember though many fed officials are less concerned about these big payroll gains than to see these as they see these gains coming from unexpected immigration it is actually the wage numbers that you want to look most closely at i think that's the key to the job support tomorrow suggesting labor market is still tight still inflationary threat okay all right it's time uh, to listen into some important opinion coming in from the u.s market experts and the current market trends and the overall outlook on the u.s economy the markets discounted a lot of really really good news i mean my my outlook was for 5400 on the s p 500 by the end of the year not by the end of the week and so uh i'm not really that troubled by this uh 
pullback here. I don't think it's going to turn out to be a, a correction, uh, but it, it could be a serious problem if, in fact, we find that uh, a push comes to shove in the Middle East. So far, it's been a short-term change in trend, meaning yields up, stocks down. That's the change in trend. The year-to-date period saw yields up, stocks up. So I don't think it's definitive yet that that's what's occurring, but I do think that the market is going to run out of patience for this waiting period. We somehow digested going from six cuts to three cuts very easily, and at some point we continue to keep pushing these back. I think really the bigger risk, what we are at risk for, is a reheating and a reacceleration in inflation that extends beyond the February numbers because those were explained away by seasonality. If we get hotter inflation for March, we get hotter inflation for April, I think you're going to start to hear conversations about actually hikes coming back into play. Okay, all right, that's a global market action and opinion as well. But how will these cues impact our own markets? There is so much that we have to track today, the RBI policy as well. We have our research team joining in with what the trade setup is looking like, the stocks that are likely to be in the news, and the action from the FNO space as well. Hey, guys, a very good morning to all of you and happy Friday as well. But, uh, Harmaz, let me come across to you first up. What is the market setup looking like today? Well, if only a happy Friday was enough to lend some support <laughs> to the markets. But then <laughs> it was yesterday what happened was because of HDFC Bank was the reason why the Nifty ended where it did. It managed to make new records but came off equally swiftly after that. An 80-point gain on the Nifty, 76 coming from HDFC Bank. So it shows that it was the single-handedly pulled the Nifty higher. And it was that reason itself that pushed the Nifty Bank higher as well. Above that mark of 48,000, we went up to 48,250, then came off those levels. We are close to record highs but today will be a very key trading session to watch and also to follow up if there is a follow-up buying in HDFC Bank as well because the ADR in the US listed shares ended 5% higher overnight now for the week the nifty is up a percent the nifty bank is up 2% but the real outperformance has come from the broader markets because the mid cap index is up three and a half percent this week and the small cap index is up over six percent and if that happens if it continues the way it has that will be the best week that has had since January of 2021 so the big question is the same that will the other heavyweights step up in case HDFC Bank does not perform considering the RBI policy today. It, they didn't step up yesterday so today will be a key session and the RBI policy as I mentioned is the big trigger to watch out for in today's session along with the non-farm payrolls in the US that will be reported later this evening. The US market handover was extremely weak. The Dow Jones had its worst session since March of 2023 and the, uh, the, what further dented sentiments were statements from the Minneapolis Fed President Neil Kashkari who said that he's wondering whether the Fed would even consider cutting interest rates if at all the inflation continues to remain sticky. The Brent crude is also trading over $90 a barrel and it's all reflecting in the Asian markets that are selling off and the gift nifty is also indicating a slightly weak start for our own markets. Back to you. That's right. Uh, crude oil prices, they continue to remain a cause of worry. Thank you, Hormas, for all those cues. But yes, uh, a lot of quarter four updates and a lot of stocks in focus as well. Mamakshi has that list for us. Good morning. Well, good morning, Sona. Let me first start off with Bajaj Finance. Strong update coming in from the company. FY24, AUM has managed to grow by almost 34% despite the restrictions imposed on the company by the RBI, FBA. Uh, in fact, uh, in the deposit book was also up almost 35% and the new loans were up almost 4% for the company. Pandan Bank reported a growth of almost 18% in its loans and advances. The total deposits growth, however, has outpaced the growth in advances up nearly 25%, as has been the case with most uh, banking updates this time around. The CASA ratio, as a result, has seen an improvement sequentially to 37.1%. RBL Bank also reported a similar trend. Deposits up almost 22%. Advances were up nearly 19%. And the CASA ratio has improved sequentially to 35.2%. Indescent Bank deposit growth rate came in slightly lower as compared to the growth in advances. Deposits grew by 14% while the advances grew by 18%. CASA ratio as a result deteriorated sequentially to 37.9%. Prestige Estate has acquired nearly 21 acres of land in Bengaluru for almost 450 crores. Uh, they will be developing a residential project spanning almost 4 million square feet out here and the projected GDV of this land parcel is almost 4,500 crores. Nestle also on our radar and that is because NCDRC has dismissed the 2015 complaint in favour of the company. The government was seeking compensation of 285 crores odd and punitive damages of almost 355 crores. And lastly, we'll also focus on Hero Motor Corp. The income tax department has issued notice of total 605 crore, including interest for six assessment years. Okay, all right. Thank you so much for that, Vamakshi. 
Uh, well, let's talk about all the cues from the FNO space now. Magnam is joining us with all those cues. Good morning, Magnam. Good morning. So it's uh, it's an option writer's market. You know, the market's been in a range, the Nifty. And yesterday as well, on weekly option, options expiry day, the Nifty actually, uh, you know, closed near 22,500. And those were uh, the straddles that were most active in trade as well. But it did test the range on both sides. The Nifty high yesterday, 22,619, and the low yesterday, 22,304, told you that there was volatility. The key index to watch today would be the Nifty Bank on two uh, uh, reasons. The first one, of course, is the RBI policy that impacts the bank. And secondly, the spike in HDFC Bank that we saw in HDFC Bank ADR overnight. And that's something that, you know, the FIs are positioning themselves for as well. FIs actually sold the Nifty and they bought Nifty Bank. Close to around 1750 crores worth selling in the Nifty and 900 crores worth buying in the Nifty Bank futures. The Nifty Bank itself is 1.2% away from a fresh record high. Let's see whether it happens or not. And then the 50,000 mark is just about 4% away. The Nifty Bank, if it has to move to a record high, what does this do to the Nifty? It just takes the range higher. So 22,600 calls are extremely active. And at the lower end, 22,500 puts are active as well. So what this means is that the Nifty range has moved higher from 22,300 to 22,500 to about 22,400 to 22,700. So that's an important range to watch out for. The Nifty moving higher, but still in a bit of a range. What can take this range further up? if uh, the institutions buy in the cash market. So we had both the FIs and CI, uh, DIS sell in the cash market yesterday. We'll keep an eye out on that. Also watch out for HDFC Bank once again. There was short covering in index futures and uh, HDFC Bank stock futures. And Vedanta saw a lot of long positions being added. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us and prepping us up for this trading day ahead. Moving on now, veteran investor Ramde Agrawal has called on the government to step up the divestment drive after the elections, said there's still excess equity, equity demand than supply in the market. In what was a juggle bandi with Manish Chokhani of Inam Holdings, Agrawal said India will have 500 million DMAT accounts in 10 years. Manish Chokhani said valuations are not cheap and expects 5 to 10 percent return on the index this year. He's a retail investor and the the force of it, people have still not, I mean, now people are getting sense of it, but they have still not understood. Till 2020, we are getting about 300 to 400,000 customers per day, per month, at the industry as a whole. Come COVID, the, uh, digital onboarding starts, no uh, physical checkup for onboarding. In five, five minutes, you start your trading and all. And we start getting four to five million customers per month. 4 to 5 million customers per month. From 40 million DMED accounts, now we have clocked 150 million. And I think in, this is three year story. And when you imagine 5 million customers a month, and these customers are cumulative in character. They're not flow, they are cumulative in character. And we are headed for maybe 300 million straight in three to four years. And maybe, I don't know what is the end game, maybe 10 years of 500 million. We are setting ourselves up to say, India is the only large economy in the world of this size which has growth ahead of it, not so what, in the rear view. What the investment theme? I mean, you are very yeah. good at... Uh... So, so there are four or five things which... You see, we are just copying what's happened in other countries. So it's nothing unique. We've all trod the path before. And if you look around the world, typically, as again, Samiran was pointing out, when you get richer, you don't buy FMCG goods. You buy consumer discretionary. So you spend more money on improving your house, you'll spend a lot more on property, you'll spend on travel, you'll buy a better car, uh, you'll do all your home improvement stuff, you'll go out to eat. So consumer discretionary is one very, very, very big play. Housing, of course, so You start with that, but do you, do you think it will never trickle down? No, it will, obviously, because yeah. uh, each time when you build a home, there are you know, yeah. five people who are supplying and ten people who are servicing you. And India has this unique pyramid of that two percent Australians 18% Filipinos, uh, and then maybe a billion uh, people living in Africa, and it will trickle down. Uh, and if I then see the math, for example, 20 years ago we were selling 1 million cars, same as China. We have barely crossed 4 million today. China is at 26 million cars. We sell something like 12 or 13 million air conditioners. China is at 220. So that's the scale of change which lies ahead of us in the next 10 years. Okay, we'll keep getting you excerpts of that interesting conversation through the course of the day. But time for a break now. When we return, the Monetary Policy Committee will announce its decision on interest rates today. We'll get you more on that on the other side. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast. Well, the Monetary Policy Committee will announce its decision on interest rates today. A CNBC TV 18 poll among market participants shows no one is expecting any change in the key policy rates. All 100% of the respondents are expecting a status quo. So when does the market expect rates to be eased? 50% expect the first rate cut in October, 40% expect it to happen by August, and 10% see rates easing only by December. So what will be the thrust of the monetary policy to, uh, today? 60% of those polled expect growth and inflation to take center stage, 20% expect the RBI to signal a change in stance, and 20% expect the RBI to sound hawkish. Here is City's Samaran Chakrabarti and Kiki Misri on their macro and monetary policy outlook. The investment side of the economy is doing significantly better than the consumption side of the economy. Investment is growing at double digits for three consecutive years, which has never happened in India's history. Consumption is the weakest that we have ever seen barring crisis periods. Going forward, our sense is that there are some headwinds developing on the urban consumption front where there are some tailwinds developing on rural consumption. So maybe this gap will converge as we move forward. Global growth is not falling off the cliff as a lot of people would have worried. It appears that because of the slightly higher growth and slightly more resilient inflation numbers, the expectation of interest rate cuts have come off you'd have to be much more radical in your policy thinking if you aspire to grow at 9 10%. 7%, 8% growth is a very conservative policy approach, according to me. There's no need or urgency to cut rates for supporting growth, unless you believe in my thesis that India needs to grow at 9 10%. So a little bit of support from monetary policy is warranted. RBI might delay the rate cut in city's house view. We think that the first rate cut happens only in October and not before that. If RBI is confident about the way uh, the monsoons are panning out and there is no geopolitical risk or, or geopolitical risk subside, I think you'll start seeing interest rates coming down. So I've seen many analysts talking about cutting Samiran rates. Samiran says October, nothing before October. I'm not so sure. My personal view is could, could be before October if the monsoon outlook is good and there is no geopolitical issue. I think it could be before October. Okay, that is the opinion coming in on when would RBI go ahead and cut interest rates. But let's move on now. The RBI has deferred the deadline to implement new rules for exchange-traded forex derivatives to the 3rd of May. The new rules were supposed to kick in from today. Traders had earlier expressed a panic about these rules with many fearing volumes will dry up by as much as 90%. But the RBI has asserted that there is no change in its policy. Ritu Singh filed this report. The daily notional turnover uh, in this trading was billions of dollars on a daily basis and the brokers that we've been speaking to over the course of the last week or so have indicated that with these rules being implemented, daily trading volumes could fall by as much as 80 to 90 percent, virtually killing this market. So that was the extent of the concern. Of course, RBI had earlier in a measure to aid the retail investors in the market had said that up to 100 million dollars, uh, you know, no underlying proof would be required to be submitted but of course it would be understood that there is one so the concern was that almost 80 90 percent of the market would be killed effective the 5th of april if these rules were to be brought in but now of course that deadline has been extended to the 3rd of may so it is a problem that remains it's just that the timeline has now been extended what happens after that if this trading moves offshore to markets like dubai or singapore we'll have to see and of course we will take up this question with the reserve bank of india in the monetary policy conference tomorrow Okay, Ritu, thank you so much for joining us with all those details. It's time to slip into a break. When we come back, we'll talk about commodities and the moves there. Stay tuned for that. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast on CNBC TV 18. It's time to get you the latest from the Israel Hamas war. Uh, US President Joe Biden effectively gave Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu an ultimatum in their phone call on Thursday and asked his counterpart to protect Palestinian civilians and foreign aid workers in Gaza or risk losing support from Washington. 
The message comes after an Israeli airstrike killed seven aid workers of the world's central kitchen in central Gaza. As Israel was bracing for a potential retaliation from Iran following its strike on the Iranian consulate in Damascus. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu said they will defend themselves and will harm anybody who plans to harm them. Okay, all right. Uh, with that, let's move on. There's a lot of impact of all this on the commodity markets as well, crude, all, all the other names. Uh, Manisha Gupta is joining us with all the update from the moves in the commodity space. Hi, Manisha. Good morning. Thank you for that, Sanal. Well, yes, we wished above uh, $90 a barrel for the Brent prices as there are concerns about broader conflict threats in Middle East and that could disrupt the oil supplies. Well, more Russian oil and fuel refineries also are cutting production and then OPEC and allies have voted to maintain current band of production cuts ending until June end. So all of these uh, has added premium to the prices. Also, there is improving China economy that seems to be aiding the demand outlook. There was a report from ANZ overnight which says that they have raised the three-month target of Brent to $95 now. So that is what we've seen coming in from most banks and brokerages. They are uh, thinking of 90 to 95 as a band for this current quarter now. Not just crude oil prices, we have seen gains continuing to the metal space as well. So whether it's about copper, aluminum, zinc, we seem to be headed for a second weekly gain. It also seems like a weekly gain for gold, but off its all-time highs right now. So we're trading at around 2280 nearly $40 off from its all-time highs. The prices have gained 25% since October. Markets are looking at expectations of rate cuts from U.S. and Europe. That is what would continue to support the markets. It is all going to be about the U.S. non um, payroll data that comes in today and that would set the mood by how, how the weekend would really start. Oh yes, so that would be a key to track and uh, lots happening globally as well when we have to track the commodity names. So thank you so much Manisha for joining us as always and making sense of the moves that we are seeing in this space. But we'll do one thing, we'll uh, take your leave on Power Breakfast today but do stay tuned, Bazaar Morning Call comes up next.